State Representative Daphna Michelson Janae from House District 30. And uh, you are tuning in to our summer town hall series where we are doing a town hall every Sunday at three. And when technology allows us, it will be uh, streamed on Facebook. When technology does not allow it, you'll just see it in the replay from YouTube. So we're happy that you have joined us today. Today's topic is a really important topic to me and to my family as we are small business owners. And um, uh, we have found ourselves in a really tough situation during COVID and I imagine others have too. So we have brought together some people who are doing amazing work in the field and keeping us caffeinated, keeping us fed, keeping our businesses running and keeping our businesses running. So um, I'm gonna ask uh, everyone to introduce themselves and we'll start with Keely. Introduce yourself, who you are, what do you do? Hi, I'm Keely Thompson. I'm the Executive Director of Community Uplift Partnership. We are a nonprofit that is working in Adams County to break the cycles of poverty. And so right now we are working with at-risk youth and we run the Reunion Coffee House. So through the Coffee House, we do uh, um, employment success program where our kids get life skills training, job skills training, mentoring, and um, professional development. And they work with us for a year through the coffee house to build um, the skills they need to get sustainable long-term employment. And I particularly love that program and I'm grateful to you for allowing my son to volunteer there um, in full disclosure <laughs> this summer. Okay, Bryant, uh, introduce yourself, Chief Storyteller. Teller. Sure. Yeah, that's me. My name is Bryant Palmer. I am the chief storyteller over at Stanley Marketplace. Um, Stanley is a mixed use community focused uh, marketplace. We took an old aviation facility and put 50 locally owned Colorado small businesses inside it. Uh, we opened about three and a half years ago and um, we have been um, reopened since May 27th, of course, with a lot of new policies and things going on. The chief storyteller um, over at Stanley Marketplace. Oh, sorry, carry on. Quite all right. Yeah, that's it. So I'm coming from uh, a little office inside Stanley right now. Uh, I love Stanley, and you'll find me at Rosenberg's often. Oh, it's um, a beautiful place. It's the best. <laughs> okay, Odoricio, Commissioner, please introduce yourself and uh, tell people where you're where you physically are right now and what they might expect from your video. Okay, my, my name is Steve Odorisio. I'm one of the county commissioners in Adams County. There are five of us, and I am the county commissioner from District 4, but we are all elected at large, so we're all accountable to everyone. So I'm proud to be here today to help contribute to the conversation about how we're supporting small businesses. Uh, I'm currently in the mountains, so I'm connecting uh, via landline phone and internet uh, via satellite. So uh, if you don't get to see me, that's actually one of the pluses or benefits, uh, <laughs> but unfortunately you'll still be able to get to hear me. Uh, looking forward to the conversation and thank you very much, Representative uh, Michaels and Janae for hosting us. Absolutely, Commissioner. And Rob Rose, um, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the SBDC. Absolutely, thank you. My name is Rob Rose. I'm the uh, Director uh, of Programming and Engagement at the Denver Metro Small Business Development Center located at the Denver Metro Chamber. Um, we have been, uh, as you can probably imagine, pretty busy uh, over the last uh, four months, just like everyone else, um, working uh, with our friends at the Small Business Administration. Um, as you can imagine, a lot rolling through the payroll protection program, as well as the idle loans first getting started. And we went into uh, that mode early on, um, getting a lot of phone calls, a lot of traffic uh, via email from folks, uh, small businesses having trouble, struggling, um, looking for answers to a lot of questions. So that's what we've been dealing with. Um, we can get a little bit more into that, but uh, the SBDC on a daily basis, we do education and training programs regularly, anywhere from startups to emerging and growth companies, as well as about 20 different business consultants meeting you where you're at with your business to help you get over those hurdles. Thank you. And they do a really cool program called Trout Tank, which I got to participate in early on. So if you're an entrepreneur, you don't want to miss out on Trout Tank. Okay, so I'm going to start with Brian and Keeley. Um, as you saw COVID approaching, what what did you, you know, what did you do? And actually, I'll start with Brian. 
um, Stanley has an amazing mission. And I'd actually, I would love for you to share what that mission is. And then tell me, you know, what, what was, what was going on in your mind and your collective minds? Sure. Yeah. So we, um, we put together our little vision of what we wanted this place to be when we were first opening. It's called our Stanifesto. It's like the Stanley Manifesto. Um, and we're trying, we're a for-profit business, but we're trying to be a business for good. Um, so we really tried to rally small business owners that wanted to do more than just commerce, that wanted to be really involved and invested in the communities around them, that wanted to do something positive, and, and we want to have a, um, a positive impact on, on the people and the folks who come here and who live in these neighborhoods. Um, and so that's sort of a core of our mission. Um, and early March was a wild time. We, um, you know, started paying attention to the news, of course, as everyone was doing, but particularly as people here started to recognize what was happening in some other places and see that a that, uh, shutdown of some kind might be imminent. Um, I mean, the first thing we did was started having meetings with our business owners who are inside Stanley. Um, normally we meet in person once a month, um, but we got everybody in on, on a big call and started meeting more regularly than that. Um, the Saturday before we shut down, we had a 9 a.m. meeting here uh, in our hangar, our event space, for all of us to hash out all the various possibilities of what closing would look like temporarily. Um, and you know, in early March, it was really hard to imagine still the scope of what would be happening and, and what we've all endured this year. Um, you know, some people thought it might last a really long time. Others thought we were talking about a couple of weeks. Um, there were a lot of unknowns that we were dealing with. Um, for us, one of the big challenges was trying to figure out how to be a community gathering place um, when gathering becomes dangerous. Um, so that, you know, that was difficult. <laughs> yeah, I, I can only imagine. Um, we'll get to what you ended up creating in just a, a bit. Keely, um, Cop and, and Reunion Coffee House also have a mission. Um, and you talked about it a little bit. I didn't know if you wanted to expand on it at all. but. Tell me what was going on in Reunion Coffee House when when all this started coming down. Yeah, I mean, a lot the same. We were just, you know, things were spiraling almost every day at one point there. And so we were just doing our best to keep up with um, just every new restriction or just the information that was coming in. And, um, you know, our mission is unique also because we're not only trying to run a business, but we're trying to run a program and build kids up. And so we're constantly having to weigh those two things of um, how do we do both those things well? And so we did get to a point um, just mid-March there, the 22nd, that we, you know, on the business end, we just couldn't find product. <laughs> you know, every place was just thrown off kilter themselves. And so uh, that ultimately ended up being, we did take about a month shut down. Um, I really believe for us, it was to save the business because we were able to kind of, our staff was so stressed because you just didn't understand fully the scope. Um, just like Brian said, you didn't understand fully the scope of what was going on. And so it was a good deep breath to just go, okay, we're just gonna take a step back here. We were still getting a lot of support from the community, but we were like, we just need to take a step back, conserve some of our resources to kind of see how this goes so that then when we reopen up, we could um, be able to get in front of the thing, in front of everything instead of being reactive. Cause that's really what it felt at the time is you're just, rea you're just reacting to everything that was coming about. Um, which was really helpful. By the time we took that deep breath, we reopened up, we were able to kind of take that month off to kind of see what we needed, how we needed to respond. Now we're able to kind of get ahead of it and just kind of reassess, but we've had to flip our whole business model. Well, no, not flip our business model upside down, but because of where Reunion Coffee House stands, we're in the middle of this tight-knit community. And so we don't have the benefits of drive-through. We don't have a drive-through. We don't have any of that kind of stuff. And so over the last year, we opened just two years ago, almost now, in another week or so was when we opened. 
And we've really built a business model around being a gathering place because we have a wonderful patio and we have this space that people love to come hang out at. So we really worked the last year and a half to build that as the people came to see us because we're not we're not the fast snappy of some of the other places around. Um, <laughs> just have an ambiance. So we've had to flip that upside down and now figure out how to keep moving with that in the midst of all the restrictions we have. So luckily Wild. We're patio. So <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank goodness for the patio. And we'll talk about when we come back around to you, that little window you opened up, which was super cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Commissioner Odoricio, um, as, as this began, whirling around this COVID uh, conversation, what was the county doing as far as the small businesses are concerned? Both Bryant and Keeley's businesses are within Adams County. So what was going on uh, at, on the county end? So on the county end, first of all, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, good. Just want to double check. Um, on the county end, uh, immediately, see the Adams County was a couple weeks ahead of others because um, we, we were actually listening to some of our health experts both inside and outside the county saying that this was going to hit us and it was going to hit us hard. Um, and so we started prepping for it right away as soon as we realized what, the, what we thought this could turn into. Um, and, and I say that because at the very beginning, um, we did take some criticism thinking we were, we were, you know, blowing this out of proportion. And then two weeks later, people were coming to us asking us, holy cow, thank God you guys uh, started when you did. And what we, had, what we started out doing right away is we established um, response and recovery teams. And the first part was response. What do we need to do to stop the bleeding? Identify what uh, resources exist out there, both state, federal, um, but then also then where do we got to fill in the gaps at the local? And so we created seven response and recovery teams in Adams County to address that, uh, what was going on. And I will put, I don't know if this just goes to the panelists, but if you want to see the website, uh, if Josh, um, I'm not sure if the public gets to see that or if everyone gets to see that. And if they do, Josh, they go Josh will the put it out. Okay, AdamsCountyCOVID19.org, you can see all those teams, one of which included business, uh, business, uh, rec uh, small business recovery. And that was each county commissioner took one or two different response recovery teams to sit on. And Mary Hodge is actually the leader of this business support and recovery team, and I serve as a supporting role for her. Um, I'm very passionate about business matters, and, and we, I think that these are the things that really make a huge difference in our community. So we established these teams and, and it allowed us to start communicating immediately with stakeholders, businesses in our community and resource and service providers outside of our community and try to start connecting the dots. Um, and since that time, uh, we've got a few different programs and I don't know if you're ready for me to go into that or you want to do it later as you go around. Go ahead. But that's what happened initially. You can go ahead because I'm going to ask Rob Rose to go into his programs. So you go okay. into yours, go for it. Got it. So I would say that it, I'm going to also copy a couple of things out there. We've got different, um, we, we have these different, um, different like strategies that we implemented from this response and recovery team. One of, one of which includes uh, right out of the gate was our, um, well, I'll just go in order. And, and if Josh could share those, uh, many grants. So the mini grants that we offer are, are small grants for small businesses, and that could be um, any small business. You could go out and look at the qualifications and criteria, but there's operations, technology, and compliance. Operations is, let's say you need a sneeze guard or something at the front desk. Technology might be you want to do a, a contactless payment system, or maybe you need some a computer system or software to help you be able to address COVID requirements and help with your distancing. Uh, and then we have a compliance grant, and that compliance mini grant helps businesses be able to help cover the cost of talking to, uh, whether it's a consultant or it's your trusted advisors. Maybe you need some help paying for the attorney fees or you're talking to your accountant about some stuff. There's a lot of costs that businesses are taking on that they didn't have to take on before. And we hope these little mini grants might be able to help uh, address some of those issues. 
We also have uh, number four is our clear communication. Because of the team that we put together under the leadership of Mary Hodge and the support of all the county commissioners, we've been able to communicate. And a lot of the things that we hear from our businesses locally, we've been able to either try to address as a local or even escalate to our state and federal. And I'm going to jump ahead because some of those things locally that we heard from businesses were that the restaurants needed some help. And so number eight in this uh, number eight was Adco to Go restaurant campaign was try to tell people, look, these are the restaurants that are still open. Please use these folks and go to them. And if and if any restaurant wants, they could sign up and be part of that. The other parts that we heard uh, included the uh, safe and open marketing campaign. A lot of people don't know what's open. And so if people are willing to, to take the pledge, and I'll as soon as I'm done talking, I'll put the actual links out for there for each one of these, if that's okay. But yeah. if a business wants to take the pledge and say, hey, we're going to be an open and a safe environment, and here's what we're doing, it helps put their customers at ease, and it also helps us market them. Uh, going on, we also created, uh, we, we, we had a great relationship with Colorado Enterprise Fund already before COVID, and we've, we've doubled down on that to be able to allow us micro loans, not grants, these are addition to the grants, loans for folks who may or not have all gotten it, because we know that the feds have not been able to trickle down all of those loans or grants to everyone, and so we're hoping this helps. And then finally, and I am going a little out of order, is the Small Business Stabilization Program, which is up to a $35,000 grant to help stabilize, and that's different than the micro grants. And that is based on need, and it's a CDBG money. And so there are some requirements that you have to meet to show a need and that it's going to benefit uh, um, folks who are, who are in real need, meaning we're trying to keep people employed. So those are, those are eight of our strategies that we were able to implement, all based on our quick uh, ability to respond. And I got to give credit to the other county commissioners, all of them, Chas Tedesco, Eva Henry, uh, Emma Pinter, and Mary Hodge uh, for put, uh, supporting all of us to be able to put these uh, programs together. Because Adams County, of course, has the most amazing team ever. Um, thank you for all of that. So Rob, now let me toss it to you. You also said that, that you all were able to get started early. Um, I just can't even imagine what was going on in that building. Uh, I can visualize your office and all the people running around in circles. Um, but tell me what, you know, to the extent that you know, uh, or anecdotally, what did your, how did your call volume increase? Um, how were you able to respond to people? And the question on many people's minds, is there still money available that, 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 we, that people can still apply for? Yes, so um, we, the good and bad about uh, where we landed uh, as soon as COVID, you know, when we're talking middle of March, like everybody else, very easily were we able to move into um, the webinar platform for a lot of our programming. So uh, we didn't miss much of a beat there as far as, again, when I backed up to my original um, introduction, I, we're, we're located and we are the programs team of the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce. So in addition to what a traditional SBDC puts together with programming uh, classes and uh, the consulting services, we also run uh, many programs through the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce. So those programs overnight went uh, into the webinar platform. Um, our leads groups, our other programming for our members, um, as well as other programming that's offered to uh, uh, businesses in the Denver area. So we did that pretty quickly, but really um, what we turned into, um, and I mentioned this briefly in my introduction, is the Small Business Administration is the parent company, if you will, uh, to all of the 15 different SBDCs in the state of Colorado. 1100, uh, a little over 1100 national. Uh, we turned into a call center, meaning that quite honestly, a lot of folks, they don't know the difference between a small business development center and the SBA, which I don't blame them. Um, we, we do a lot of the same services, it's trickle down. So we got um, probably about mm, 30, 40 fold what we normally would get on a phone call and emails at those times uh, because folks were confused, they were scared, they needed information and we were there to do that. So we became literally a call center to where uh, we would have anywhere from, you know, on a typical day, we'd have 25, 30 uh, something phone calls for uh, consulting or training or things of that nature. We would have over 100 phone calls in a day from folks that are asking, how do I get on the front end? An idle loan. What is an idle loan? So we had to educate ourselves um, as not just our center, but as a team of 15 different small business development centers in the state. So um, again, it trickled down from the SBA. We were in direct communications with um, 
um, uh, the main office of SBA in Denver, um, and we went to work, uh, rolled up our sleeves, answered those questions, did training, um, did the best we could with getting the funding out there. Um, Steve had mentioned a couple different, uh, you mentioned Colorado um, uh, Enterprise Fund, one of the micro lenders. We worked with a ton of micro lenders too in phase one and in phase two when additional funds became available or if they uh, didn't qualify or couldn't get money through idle or didn't want to go the uh, payroll protection program uh, portion. Um, that's what uh, really we did in that um, uh, and continue to do quite honestly because we still get questions obviously today. We also wrote out, rolled out a ton of webinars like everybody else did on the chamber side as well as the SBDC in our network. Um, those ranged anywhere from getting to understand the idle loan program, the payroll protection program, the forgiveness part of that, um, the CARES Act in general. Um, the financial health of your business, a scary time for people, whether they gonna, we're going to stay or how they hold things out um, over this, um, whether it be a couple of weeks, couple of months, or then some where we're at today kind of a thing. Um, we also talked about um, and worked with uh, the folks at un unemployment because uh, folks were, un um, whether they're the business owner or the staff member, they didn't know where to go. Should I do unemployment? Should I stay? How do I stay um, in my current business? Um, my, my employer has a PPP or they haven't been um, accepted for that or they're in limbo. Should I go on unemployment? So we had a couple webinars around that as well. And now obviously we're trying to focus and move forward with more of a reopening um, and a recovery mentality in most of our programming. And um, the call volume obviously has gone down, but you'll see a lot of our education training programs as well as um, consulting's a little bit more on that sort of next stage of how, uh, how PPP loans are sort of uh, rolling out. Um, and equally as important, um, those micro loans that are still available, whether it be through the city and county of Denver or through, um, like I said, the micro loans, uh, uh, a lot of micro loans that we have with uh, micro lenders within the state of Colorado and Denver specific. So a lot of new partners, a lot of old friends that we've been working with um, just to help out these small businesses to make sure they can they can hold the best they can, put themselves into a recovery stage if, if they can, um, and or uh, just get to that next level um, as we all sort of figure out and work our way through this issue. Yeah, um, so I have to uh, I have to come clean here a little bit because I saw Odoricio's face respond when you said the city and county of Denver. Um, so the the all of House District 30 is in Adams County. However, for people who don't know, um, before I was in office at all. I used to sit on the SBDC community board in, in, at the uh, Denver Metro SBDC. So these are my friends um, and it's always nice to have a, a reunion. But yes, there is a Metro North Chamber um, and there are also uh, connected resources throughout the state that include here in Adams County. Um, but this is my friend Rob, so he's going to help us out today, and I'm grateful for that. Um, okay, so I'm going to pop over to Brian again. So Brian, when um, I, I, I am an avid reader of your, of your um, newsletter, okay. and I often share it in my own newsletter, um, mm -hmm. or just retweet it, because uh, I know how much you brought to the community when you came online, um, and how much you were missed in the kind of moments of, okay, how do we figure this out? So talk to me a little bit about how you rolled out um, the whole curbside, I mean, like, oh my God, and then the, the, the tents in the, in the parking lot and um, what can people expect now? Those are all, thank you, first of all, for the support. We really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, run 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 from the beginning we we closed stanley um saturday march 14th was our last day in business for a while um still a lot of uncertainty and 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 not really sure how long that would last but we knew we didn't want to let we we just couldn't be still and quiet and so that tuesday three days later we launched stanley to go so that was a curbside pickup program um we um, we're very much a place we wanted people to come and hang out and stay. And so putting that together when you couldn't do that was pretty tough, but we've got some really resourceful business owners here. Um, and we worked really hard uh, nonstop for a few days and put together a curbside pickup program. We're fortunate that we have a pretty big parking lot and a lot of land outside. So we were able to sort of 
um, assign certain sections of the parking lot to certain restaurants so that you each one would have a little table in the middle of the parking lot. You could drive right up and, and get your food that you ordered online. Um, a lot of our restaurants weren't doing to go at all until the shutdown. Um, and so it was a lot of um, running around, sharing resources, figuring out how to actually put together a to go ordering system online in three days. It was, it was a lot of, um, yeah, it was tough, but we <laughs> it worked, you know, um, and with a lot of grit, we, we made it work. Um, that ran through May 27th. So we were closed for about two and a half months, uh, reopened the day that we first could. Um, and a, a positive thing to come out of all this is that we've got now you can eat here and stay with a lot of, you know, um, health regulations and things like that. But we're continuing those to go programs. So for people who aren't comfortable eating um, at a restaurant, we, we've got all our spots continuing that to go business. And we think that's going to continue for the life of these businesses, you know, far beyond the pandemic, which is a, a good thing to grow out of it. Um, the other thing we put together, knowing that the safest way to spend time right now is outdoors, um, we teamed up with a couple of different organizations and erected some giant tents on our west patio. Um, it's really sunny, beautifully sunny so here, but often hot. And so we figured these tents would give us a bunch of shade where people could uh, very safely hang out at Stanley, but in a really safe way. So we've got a big grassy lawn. We painted circles on that. Um, so people would know here's a 10 foot circle and the next one is eight or 10 feet away so that they're spaced out, socially distanced. Um, and we started encouraging people to come pick up food from a Stanley business and just take it outside. Um, sit on the lawn. We've got one that we filled with these old spools that we painted. We call it Backyard at Stanley. Um, and it's been great. Um, we have some live music out there every Sunday afternoon because um, there's plenty of room for the performers to be far away from people and people to sort of spread out and enjoy um, being outside at Stanley. Um, it, yeah, it's, it, we, you know, we, we're open inside too. We've got some businesses that have indoor spaces only. So put hand sanitation stations all over the place, a lot of signage. Um, we required masks here before that was a statewide mandate because we knew that our employees uh, would be safer if we did that. And people have been really respectful of that. We've been very lucky and grateful for folks um, coming here when they're willing to follow all the sort of policies we put in place. Very exciting um, and really, really well done. I commend you thoroughly and my family thanks you very, very much. Yeah. Um, Keely, you also came up with some creative uh, creative solutions. And one of those was the side window, which took me back to, I actually, the first time I walked up to it, it reminded me of going for Rita's water ice in Philadelphia. Um, just like this kind of little, this little window in the, in the side of the wall. Um, tell me about that. And also, Tell me about how, how your students adapted, how they responded to all of this. Yeah, well, um, well, first, I've been super proud of our team. Um, we happen to be just in the middle of a transition from one group of apprentices to a new group. And it just happened to be right at that time, um, a few of our kids who'd been around and knew, knew everything that was going on were ready to move on, which was just the natural cycle. So I've been really, really proud of our new um, team because they've come in and they've just been flexible and jumped right in and kind of learned that's the cup way. You just go with the flow and <laughs> that's kind of our life. Um, so it's been really awesome. Um, we so yeah, we just had to look at our space. And like I said earlier, we don't have some of the things that early on businesses were able to open up with, like a drive through and things like that. So we came up with the idea to serve out of one of the windows right to the side of our front doors so that we could still open and allow people to walk up. There's a lot of people who are walking around in the summer. So that really helped us in the beginning. Um, we're now getting ready, thanks to the Adams County Relief Grant, to actually remodel both front windows so that we can have service windows. And again, I think it'll be something that will 
stay for the long haul for the summers of being able to serve out of that window because we've actually really enjoyed um, having that opportunity. Um, and then again, our patio has been the main thing that is one of our main features anyway. So it's been really nice to just be able to spread everybody out and stay outside. So now we're in the spot of, okay, someday the nice Colorado weather will be or not. So <laughs> that's just the next phase. We're starting to look into curbside stuff and things like that, how we can do it safely and well. So. We have a few little creative tricks up our sleeve that we're working on right now. So hopefully by the fall, we'll have um, everything readjusted so that we can keep business moving forward in a safe way um, with the cold weather. So, Well, one of the creative things that you did to serve the community was putting up balloons for the class of 2020. Whose idea was that? And, and how many people came? I, I know we came with our photographer and took pictures of our son in his cap and gown because you know he didn't have a graduation um how many people do you think came by and took pictures by and by the way I, everybody just i want you to imagine okay so it's on the patio with the 2020 with the beautiful reunion lake and big red barn in the background so it made unbelievable pictures but who who's who's brilliant brainchild was that oh we just have a team of us that meets every week to you know, brainstorm creative things we could do. So we've we try we've tried to do a lot of those kind of things. Like, how could we respond to kids not being able to have graduation ceremonies? We did a lot that month with teacher appreciations and stuff. So it's really cool because the we know everybody's just aching to get out. Everybody wants to stay safe, but do it in a safe way. But how can we create those things? So we've actually created quite a few things. We did the balloons for a few days for the graduates. We had all kinds of graduates, not just the high school graduates or college. We had like little kindergartners out there because they missed their little ceremonies and everything, right? So I think people really love that. We just try and kind of think through what, what can be a benefit to people right now? Um, we've done sidewalk chalk where, you know, just through the day, we've given out little packets of sidewalk chalk and people could space all along the sidewalk in front um, to social distance and be able to draw on the sidewalk that day was really great. Um, we do have bingo right now. So all our tables are socially distanced. So whoever can come fit in on a table um, can come and enjoy. So keep kind of trying to just think through what what can we provide the community we have had music on the patio last week and we had some jazz musicians which is really nice so just anything we can do that's socially distanced but um still still providing a place for people to come yeah i love i mean one of the reasons that i invited um both of you is because of your strong commitment to bringing the community together and you know during this time we need that more than ever before um and we have to be creative mm -hmm. so commissioner odoricio as uh, um as you hear these amazing adams county business owners um tell me a little bit about what does the next phase look like for adams county let's 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 live in a world where uh recovery is real um and we start to look at um, look at what the field has laid out for us. How many people have lost businesses? Um, I, I know you don't have these numbers off the top of your head, but just anecdotally, um, how many people have lost businesses? What do we need to do as a community uh, to come together and help lift these businesses back up? Well, I first want to say, um, I think as we, from the very beginning, whether it's been in the response or at some point when it's a formal recovery phase, and that it's not a real formal flip the switch between the two, right? Because we're still in a very much responding um, both to the disease and to the fallout of the actions that we've had to take because of the virus. Um, uh, people like, like Rob and the folks at SBDC across the state have been some of the greatest um, all-stars in this entire process. They have worked tirelessly with our small businesses and given them advice. It has been amazing. So I just want to thank Rob and the, all the folks at SBDC and the state at OEDIT because they've been outstanding. Like 
I can't tell you. I mean, we're going to look back at this time and figure out how many businesses truly did stay open because of that work. And I, I think we're going to we're going to be saddened to see. To get to your question, we're going to be saddened to see the folks that had to close. We're going to we're going to be hurt by those, but we're also going to have to celebrate all the great things that were done because of the folks at SBDC, the folks at the state. Um, and, the, and even all the locals, every city, in addition to what I explained and all those different strategies that I put out there that I explained are also supplemented by what cities are doing and what other local groups are doing. So um, it's going to be hard to celebrate at some point, but we'll have to at least acknowledge um, the folks that were able to really help out. And, and that kind of gets to the part where you, you chose two of the best businesses that I could think of in Adams County to talk about. You've got you have got Keeley's group up north and Bryan's down in the south, but I mean it really is representative of community-based businesses. And what I think we need to do moving forward is we're not going to get to a binary on-off. We're not going to get to a binary okay. I think this is not going to be the destination that a lot of people want. We, we want quick gratification in this country. And, and the sad thing is that sometimes it's more of a journey. And I think that COVID, whether we, who knows, we may have a vaccine that will just allow us to put this into our, our rear view mirror, but there's still going to be fallout. And I think what we need to do is rally around each other and do the best we can to not have the conversation go back to an on-off switch. And that's what I'm worried about for businesses is some people already are talking about we need to shut folks back down again. I don't think that's the right move. I think what we need to do is figure out how do we stay open with safety, with protections, and how do we get to yes? How do we keep open without having to go feel like we are so, we put ourselves in a situation collectively that we're so desperate to have to shut folks down again. I, I think that's the thing moving forward is that we've got to keep responding, start recovering, but also protect the ground that we have gained. And that means little things like, not fighting about the masks or the mandates or the messaging, but try to see what do we do to, to just dig deep, even if it's inconvenient and uncomfortable, to help with these businesses. And I already, like my family, we made a special trip down to Stanley to go to the biscuit, Denver Biscuit Company, to get some of that food because we wanted to support. And it was our way of getting out. And I just think that it, there's, a, there's going to be a time where we're going to have to just ask Americans and community members to dig deep, wear the mask, uh, give a little extra on the on the tips, and pay an extra on some of this stuff because we're actually helping each other out. Um, and just think of the greatest generation; they were melting down their extra buttons and snaps from their clothes, and you know, like like what we're going through is nothing compared to what other generations have had to do for each other. So that's what I think, and I'm I'm just think that if we can pull it together, we can keep people open. And, and that their business is open. And I think that's what we need to do. That's just my thoughts on it. Okay, well, you made me think of a joke, but you took it away by saying that our generation isn't really doing anything. But I planned to tell my grandchildren how I walked uphill in the snow both ways in a mask. So a mask. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really working on these stories because I already have a granddaughter. So like, she's going to be old enough to hear these stories pretty soon. Um, so I'm not going to let her talk to you, Commissioner. Uh, so, so Rob, um, I don't know exactly how, um, how closely you communicate with the federal delegation. Um, and what I really mean by that is I can't remember if you're a 501c3 or a c4, and if you're allowed to do any sort of advocacy work, uh, um, advocating to our federal delegation for dollars. Um, I know that many small business owners have been waiting to see what's going to happen with the HEROES Act and with the next uh, round of we don't know what yet. And how does that um, roll out? How does that play out in the SBDC world? And what are you telling people uh, in terms of what might or might not come next? Yeah, well, to answer the first part of the question, so we are a 501c3 as the chamber in SBDC. Our leadership foundation is our 501c6 within the chamber family. Um, but, you know, it's kind of steady as she goes. It's kind of uh, echoing what Steve was just discussing. You know, we are still 
um, we're still in defensive mode, but obviously trying to settle as much ground as we can to keep our small businesses, our members sort of positive in the fact of, you know, do them as much as they can right now, um, plan as much as they can right now for the next couple of months, next uh, quarter, whatever it may be, um, uh, because we don't. I mean, right now it would be uh, dangerous for us, for us to say, hey, and the, it, here's what this next round of funding is going to look like. We're quite honestly, we're still digging our heels into, again, idle loan questions and um, the, the forgiveness part of that. And, um, uh, and then, of course, uh, the whole next chapter of, of the payroll protection program and, and uh, the forgiveness part of that, uh, which has taken even longer than I think everybody expected to, to get that out and what that looks like. There are many of different seminars that you can re, uh, review and, um, uh, and, and try and uh, sort, of, sort of work through that. But again, to us, we're trying to stay steadfast to what we do well, which is rally around our uh, 20 plus consultants that we have, um, deal with our clients and, uh, that are calling in right now now and saying, hey, I need help still, or um, I'm now to that finance, I'm beyond, okay, um, the, the, the scare, the, the um, uh, shock and awe, now I need to really get to that next level of, okay, how do I stabilize this? Uh, we only lost one staff member, we didn't lose any, or we lost several. What's the next step for me? How do I um, uh, start marketing again? Um, and what's safe in that environment compared to, again, just uh, stabilizing my financials and uh, we'll also, we, you know, but on the second uh, breath, I say that we are having a lot of new businesses. As you can probably, uh, some folks are starting new businesses. We have one of our uh, flagship programs is our Leading Edge program. It's a 10-week business plan writing class. We didn't really skip a beat with that either. Typically, that's live. It's a three-hour every week for 10 weeks. We went virtual on that, and we had a very strong class uh, for our spring to finish off when COVID started. And we had uh, we just are about to finish up our summer class and on to the fall. So. Um, I guess bottom line is we're trying to, to, to stabilize as much as we can um, and also kind of talk about the recovery stage because when we start talking about that and our consultants uh, feel comfortable talking to our, uh, our uh, small business development center clients, they feel better about that to Steve's point as well um, and to the two small businesses that are here. Um, we've got to bring hope. We've got to bring, uh, there is a next stage. We're going to get out of this and this is some of the ways that we can do that. So we're, we're just putting our uh, recovery hat on and seeing the best we can are doing the best we can day in and day out um, until we hear further from the federal government or it, it drops down from the feds to the, the small business administration to us we're there we're, we're going to help in any way we can but right now like I said we're, we're looking towards recovery to try and uh, get people in a positive mind frame so you you said something that um, triggered a question for me is this a good time to start a business it's always a good time to start a business, quite honestly. It just depends on the type of business um, that folks are getting into right now. Because um, no matter, I mean, quite honestly, in um, uh, uh, recessions, it's probably uh, when we see the most businesses that um, uh, are downturns, if you will. That's when we see a lot of folks that are coming up because, again, they may see the opportunity. They have a little bit of money socked away um, because they just lost their job or they're looking for the next chapter that happens. Um, it's definitely not, um, uh, uh, it, it's not to numbers right now that we've seen from the last um, uh, recession that we had, but we know that's going to happen. However, I was just um, um, on a, a call last week with uh, Mike O'Donnell from uh, Colorado uh, Lending Source, and he was saying that the data is showing to him a little bit, um, uh, a little different from what I've been saying right now, saying that there are a little bit less startups that are happening right now. Um, but again, I think we're still early into, into this. Um, people are still sort of uh, working through um, the loan programs that they're in right now. They're still reaching out to micro lenders that are actually starting to bring more money or pools of money to the table. If folks couldn't, uh, again, uh, take advantage of the idle loan or the advancement through idle loan, or or even the payroll protection program, because that was obviously, I uh, came off a little, not, not exactly the way everybody planned. Um, so uh, micro lending came into play and still into play right now. There's, uh, we are very lucky, I think, in the state of Colorado that, that there are many micro lenders that do fine work. Um, and um, that's what we're trying to do is highlight some of those partners, because again, um, uh, it's all about uh, partners with us through the Small Business Development Center. We have 20 different business consultants. We have our chamber partners, some of our, um, our programming uh, comes directly from our members. We reach out to whoever uh, that we see that can help um, in areas um, and we'll reach out to all the different partners to do that um, uh, the best we can. That's excellent, Rob. So Bryant, 
uh, you're actually 51 businesses. I mean, you know, it, all encompassing. Um, what kind of a flow have you seen during this time? I know that some of the businesses have left. I don't know if that was already planned prior. Um, have you seen new ones come in? What's, what's, what's your view on the state of things as from that perspective? Great question. Uh, we, <clears throat> we've had, you know, we, in the time we've been open, we've had very little turnover. Um, we've had more in the past, you know, four or five months than we've had before. A couple of those we were planning on and knew were happening. Um, one of them was directly COVID related. Uh, we had an arcade upstairs at Stanley. Um, wonderful group of folks. We're still real good pals with them, but um, running an arcade right now, it's a really high touch business. Um, we're socially distanced, so you can't really be socially distant and you'd need to have eight employees wiping down every machine after a person plays it once, you know, like just, it just didn't work for them. And, and maybe they'll come back one day, but for now they're not here. But we've had uh, two new businesses open in the past month. We have another opening this coming week and we're announcing a fourth new one on Wednesday of this week. So, you know, I think like Rob was saying, um, there's opportunity in chaos and crisis sometimes. Um, the first two businesses that are new that are open here were underway before the pandemic hit. And so um, they took a brief pause, but then continued. Um, they're great. One's called Third and Logan. It's a collaboration between Logan House Coffee Company and Third Culture Bakery. And so they're doing uh, matcha and coffee and delicious mochi muffins and mochi donuts, really fantastic. Uh, another one is a butcher shop called Alita. Um, it's a specialty food market. They do sandwiches and salads and that sort of thing. Um, and we have a sort of pan-Asian restaurant opening this coming week called Chi Lin. And um, I, that's gonna be great. To answer your question, I think um, we're doing a lot of things to make sure that our businesses are gonna be okay. Um, we're really collaborative here and trying to sort of be really open and make sure we're aware of what every individual business is going through and experiencing. And um, the last thing we want is someone to suddenly feel like they have to close tomorrow um, without a lot of extensive conversations about how can we help each other stay afloat, um, us as ownership and, and um, the neighboring businesses too. So we do a lot of communication about what's coming. I, we don't have expected closures that we think are going to happen um, for right now. I think a second complete shutdown would be really tough for a, a lot of businesses to handle. So we're going to work really hard to try to um, make sure we can keep operating safely the way that Steve was mentioning earlier. Um, but I, I think we'll continue to see some innovation come out of what we're all experiencing right now. And I do think that will lead to some new businesses that we haven't quite um, thought of or weren't really expecting yet. Yeah, I think um, as an entrepreneur, I can say uh, there's no time like a hard time for an entrepreneur mm -hmm. to come up with a good idea. Mm -hmm. And um, I encourage like you, Brian, and you, Rob, have said um, that we, we keep these entrepreneurial ideas coming because if there is another wave, it's going to be an entrepreneur like 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 all of you actually on this call, um, uh, including the commissioner there. Um, who will be able to come up with the solution to stay open. So we're coming to the end of our incredible time together and I'm so thankful for you. And I would love, love for you to give your last, um, give a closing statement of s some sort in terms of maybe something hopeful for the community um, and for the business owners who are out there. Keely, you wanna kick us off? Uh, I think um, mainly through this whole time, you know, just like you said, Daphna, um, through hard times comes blessing sometimes, not maybe blessing, but just creativity. And so I'm um, really hoping to just continue to see the businesses in our community thrive and be creative in new things. I know like for us, there's just new things we're doing that we probably wouldn't have been pushed to do so quickly or at all. Um, so I'm excited to just see what everybody comes up with and or even so how we can collaborate together because I think that's a huge piece of when you're kind of off in your silos because everything's doing fine. You're just kind of in your own world. But what I've seen is us be able to kind of come together and start talking more together. And so it'll be exciting 
um, the hope is seeing how we can work together and collaborate over the next um, year to just keep each other supported and thriving. Excellent. Thank you for that, Keely. And also, thank you for adding milkshakes to your menu. I'm very grateful. Um, it is my favorite drink in the whole wide world. Okay, uh, Rob, what, what kind of closing um, thoughts do you have for our audience? Um, I'd just like to build on the collaboration piece that Keely just mentioned. Um, it, although it may not seem on the surface, it means a, a lot to you all as um, consumers, as uh, business owners or whatnot, but your small business development centers have never worked more closely, 15 of them in the state of Colorado, with other resources that we are all bringing to the table to make a product that basically in services that um, is second to none in the fact of assisting small businesses through this very difficult time. That could be anything from um, new programming that we're offering, uh, some services that we're bringing in, um, uh, the opportunity for folks if they didn't have a chance to sit one-on-one -on -one with um, financial um, service providers. Um, uh, in the law area, we're bringing some attorneys on board that uh, typically we haven't had in partnerships with in the past that, uh, again, we're rallying around the state services to um, uh, and all the SBDCs to do that. So new services are coming on board um, in this challenging time uh, to rally things together to help um, what we've all been talking about is getting to that next stage and equal is important, stabilize where we're at right now. So very excited from my point of view to offer those services, obviously to um, everybody in the state of Colorado, whether you're in City and County, Denver, Adams County or anywhere else uh, within the state. Um, we love small business and we're gonna uh, help you the best we can day in and day out. So grateful for you, Rob, and just grateful for the opportunity I had to serve with you all and thankful for your time today. Bryant, what do you got for us? You know, we, um, one of our restaurants here is called Stanley Beer Hall and their patio is open right now, but they've kept their interior space closed because they're using that space um, in collaboration with Colorado Restaurant Response and they're making thousands of meals every week that are being delivered to people in need all across Aurora. And one of the things the ownership team of that group is working on right now is trying to figure out um, how to continue that kind of programming um, once they're able to actually open up fully. And so one of the most exciting things to me is watching these small business owners who pivoted their business in a way that's helpful to community really try to imagine what, what can we do to continue that even when we're all past um, COVID-19. And so how can we look at things we're learning right now and put them into practice so that um, beyond this sort of crisis moment, we can continue to do some of the sort of good works that have arisen out of this, this sort of <laughs> madness we're all experiencing right now. So what, that's the most exciting thing that I'm helping work on right now is, is helping small businesses figure out ways to continue programming like that, um, you know, with this collaboration and community spirit front of mind. Um, and I'm really hopeful about the prospects for that. Beautiful, I love that. I saw. Um, I don't remember, maybe it was in your newsletter or maybe I saw someone post it on Facebook, but I'm really grateful for that uh, work that you're doing with the Restaurant Association to feed our community. And, you know, as you know, um, but maybe those who are watching don't, where Stanley Marketplace is located is in one of the areas of my district of Aurora that is struggling the most. Mm -hmm. And so we're so grateful for you there. I can't say it enough. All right, with the closing words, Kamish. Wow, thank you very much. First of all, it's an honor to be on this panel. I mean, you've got SBDC, Rob, you've, you've got Stanley Bryant, you've got Keely from Cup, and of course, uh, amazing Daphna. I mean, you guys, thank you. Thank you for letting, allowing me to participate. Um, I, I just want to say, um, you know, a lot of what, what we're going to do when we look back on these times, and it's going to be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and, and, and we're telling the stories about uphill both ways with a mask on, um, but we'll also be telling stories about how we came together. And, and there were times it was tough, and it is tough. And it's tough both in what we're going through at the businesses and in the community uh, and also personally. And I think that what, what we want to do is be thinking, what, what story do I want to tell my grandkids? about what I did and how we acted as a community and, and what story we tell is based on what we do for the next few months. And 
it's not going to be easy. It has not been easy. And, but if we can pull together, and it means you're, you're doing the best you can to shop local, drink local, you know, go from 15 to 20% tip up to 25 to 33, knowing that that person has less. Um, help each other out. If you're a landlord, see what you can do to work with your renters. If you're a renter, make sure you're still paying some rent. I mean, doing the best we can. Everything that we're going to do uh, is just doing it together is how we're going to get through this. So that's kind of a long-winded way of just saying that I really i am optimistic that we'll be able to tell better stories than we think we are, but we will. We'll be able to tell stories how we came together. And uh, it, it, once again, it's an honor and privilege to be uh, on this panel with you, and thank you so much for all the work that you're all doing, Daphna. And thank you so much, Commissioner, for uh, the unbelievable amounts of resources that are available to our community. And I just want to let you know if you're watching and you're thinking, oh, but I don't really know how to do this, that, or the other thing, please feel free to reach out to our office or put us a message right here in the comments um, or on Facebook or send us an email. You can reach me at Daphna at DaphnaForColorado.com. Um, that's spelled D-A-F-N-A. Um, and we will help connect you with as many resources as possible. It is our goal to keep the businesses running, keep them open, keep our communities being served and their needs being met. And all of these people who we have shared time with today, they're all doing that for us. So let's do keep coming together as a community and let's support one another so that we can get to the other side of this crazy pandemic and look at each other and say, we did it. So please join me. We're here every Sunday at three o'clock and um, you can see what the topic is in our newsletter and we will continue to share with you throughout the summer. Let us know if there's something you would like for us to cover that you haven't heard us cover yet. Thanks everyone. Have a great Sunday. Keep those businesses running. Thanks everybody. Thank you.